Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. Have you tried making a quilt? And you get a quilt block and it's got all these little pieces to it, but you can never get them lined up. Well, I have the solution for you. It's called paper piecing. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to make a double pinwheel using paper. So let's take a look at the double pinwheel. On this double pinwheel, you have this purple color here. This is one pinwheel. Then look at this green flower print. That's your second pinwheel. These are all lined up. It's really easy. And on the back, you're gonna see paper. And there's only three stitch lines per square. So let's look at what you need to do to make this block. You'll need to pick three different fabrics. So my inspiration fabric was this uh, print right here where it has a green background and it has these beautiful pink and violet flowers on it. So you wanna pick two other colors from this fabric. When you cut this fabric, you're gonna cut these squares, your inspiration fabric, six and a half inch square. And for each block, you're gonna need four pieces. So you cut four and then your other two fabrics, you're going to make them five and a half inch squares. Out of all of the squares, you're going to cut them. You're going to place a ruler going corner to corner and cut them in half so that you have all these little half square triangles. For this paper piecing project, I recommend you use paper like this. It's very, very thin. It's easy to get. If you have a hardware store near you like Home Depot or Lowe's, go into the paint department because this is where they sell it. This paper is used to mask off areas when painters are painting that they don't want the paint to get on. This is really thin. It comes in a variety of widths. This is a six inch wide roll. And look at all this paper. I've had this for many years and I've still got a lot of it left. Cut these into six inch squares. For each block, you're gonna need four six inch squares. Take some paper that's gonna be your master copy. So it can be a different color, like a photocopier paper or just any paper you have around the house. And use a square ruler and draw a five and a half inch square. Then after you've got that done, you wanna draw a six inch square around it. So you can, this is a six and a half inch square ruler that I use for cutting fabric. If you have one of these, this is a really good one to do. So five and a half inch square, then a six inch square. After you're done with that, you're going to draw a line going corner to corner. Then you're gonna draw one more line, line it up with each corner, but you're only gonna stop in the middle. So you're only gonna draw towards the middle. This is your paper piecing pattern. Really simple to draw. Here is my master, and I uh, wrote inside of each area one, two and three. Three is your largest area. So place your paper piecing pieces behind your master. Then use either clips if you have them. They're the easiest. If you try to put straight pins through all this, it's going to be really difficult. But if you have clips, this is not all going to slip and slide. Once you've got all of this together, you're going to go to your sewing machine and, I'll, and set it up and I'll show you it's a really easy setup. So let's go to my sewing machine. The first thing you want to do is remove the thread from your needle. So pull it all the way out of your machine. You can leave your bobbin thread in, but remove the, the thread on top. Then you want to line the lines up. So we're going to stitch on this line going this way and the one just going halfway through. I like to manually lower my needle down so that I can get it right on that line. And you're going to stitch 
right through all these layers of paper. So just go ahead and stitch on it. And then just take it out of your machine and now line up the other line that goes halfway through and again I recommend you manually lower it and only stitch to the center line. And remove it. When you're done, remove the clips. Take just the top sheet off. So let me see if I can get a hold of it here and pull it off. There are holes in here. This is your stitch line and also your perforation lines. So when it comes time to pull the paper off, it comes off really easy. Now the top side where we stitch down through is very smooth. But on the back side, it's very rough. So when you go to use these little patterns, you made all of these copies in just one motion. So when you go to use the patterns, you want to make sure you always have the rough side down when you're placing your fabric on the top side. I went ahead and put on here one, two, three. This is the stitching order. You don't need to put it on every one of your uh, pieces of paper, but you can keep one nearby you already labeled so you don't forget. But once you do one of these, it's really easy to remember. So this again is the stitch order. Take your two smaller half square triangles and bring front sides together and line up your pieces of fabric. And remember, you're putting the fabric on the smooth side of the paper. You're going to take this edge of the fabric and bring it past this line here and this line here. Okay, so bring it up there. It's okay if your fabric sticks out beyond the edge. That's going to be trimmed up later. So go ahead and put it past those two lines and then I would go ahead and pin it like this. Then at your sewing machine, flip it over and you're going to stitch right on top of this perforated line. Now I've got it stitched, but one thing I want to mention before I, I go on. When you stitch across here, you want to stitch and stop right at the line that goes this way. So make sure you do that. You don't want to go beyond that line. All right, so but you're here on the front. You can open these two pieces up and either finger press, or if you're like me, you have an iron real close to your sewing machine, you can press it. But finger pressing is okay. Just make sure you've done a real good job of finger pressing. Then after you've done that, you're going to take your other piece of fabric, your large half square triangle, bring front side down on top of it, and again, you're bringing it past the stitch line that's going this way. Turn it over onto the back and stitch all the way across. Then, again, you can either finger press or use your iron this open. And then you just make four of these to do the entire block. So make four. After you've made all your blocks, then you want to square it up to five and a half inches square. So place, there's, I'm using a six and a half inch square ruler, so this is gonna be pretty easy. I have a line going this way, but also you wanna visually pay attention to a line going from this corner. So on the really long seam, I'm gonna place that long diagonal line up. But I also wanna make sure that I've got things lined up going this way. So you're, you want to center the block so that it within a five and a half inch square area. 
So you want some fabric sticking out from all four sides so that everything comes out evenly. So you would go ahead, after you've got it all lined up, then go ahead and trim this side. Let me get this out of the way and then go and trim this side. Once you've done that, let me get all this out of the way, then turn this block, bring this corner over here, and place your five and a half inch line on your previously cut lines and make sure that this diagonal line is across here. Okay, everything's all lined up, five and a half inch line here and here, and then the diagonal line going here. And then do your last two cuts. One more. Do this on all of your blocks. Before you lay them out, you want to remove the paper. And the reason for that, it's going to be easier to remove the paper now at this step than to wait after everything's stitched together and then try to remove the paper. And it's really, really easy. You can take a straight pin and just score it here if you need to a little bit. But because we perforated the paper, it should be fairly easy to begin to tear all the paper off. So go ahead and tear all the paper. So once you've got all the paper tear, torn off, then lay them out so that you see a pinwheel here and then your big larger piece of fabric is also in a pinwheel. Because I've got three different colors and to make a quilt or table runner, or whatever it is you're making, you can have alter these colors. The purple would be more in towards the center and then others would have the pink. So there would be a little bit of variation. So you would go ahead and lay it out like this. Then bring two of them together and stitch a quarter inch seam. Bring these two together and stitch a quarter inch seam. After you've stitched these two together and these two together, you want to press your seams. You want to press the seam here going in the opposite direction than this seam up here. So you bring the two rows together. Make sure again that the seams are going in opposite directions. And remember your paper is already going to be off by the time you do this. And then stitch together. And then a quarter inch seam. Then press it on the back side and then press on top. After you have it all stitched together, just to verify that everything is okay, because this should come out to 10 and a half inches square, especially if you're going to put it in a quilt. Everything needs to be the same if you're going to put it in a quilt. Just place a ruler on top, and this is a, a 12 and a half inch square ruler, which if you're into quilting, you must have a 12 and a half inch square ruler. And just make sure that everything is okay. And you would square it up, just to go through the process just like I showed you when squaring up each individual section. You would do the same thing except you would be marking the 10 and a half inch line. Since this one is okay, this is what your block looks like when it's all done. What can you do with this? Of course, make it into a quilt but you can also do a really long table runner and this would be absolutely beautiful in a table runner. And that gives me a good idea. I think I'm gonna do that. I'll do a tutorial on how to do a pinwheel table runner. You like that idea? Let me know, leave a comment below. Making a pinwheel is not the only paper piecing block pattern out there. There are many books published on paper piecing and I do have some but I am packing to move, so they're all packed, otherwise I would have shown them to you. But you can make trees. I also had one where I did a video on a house. Now the links are below the YouTube screen on looking for those videos, so you can learn how to make a tree and also make a paper piecing house. There are paper piecing flowers. There's paper piecing 
everything out there. It's a lot of fun. So check out those other tutorials and also look for paper piecing patterns on the internet. All you need to do is go, get, go into Google or whatever source uh, search engine you have. Just enter paper piecing patterns. All kinds of goodies are going to pop up. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. Give paper piecing a try. You just might like it. And don't forget to check for the links below your YouTube screen. Also, if you're a beginner at sewing and you're looking for some super easy beginner sewing projects, that also will be listed below your YouTube screen. Also, follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. And please leave a comment below if you like the video or you have a suggestion for another video. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing.